Hello, my name is Eileen Ronan. I'm Director of Midwifery at University Maternity Hospital Limerick. I provide leadership in the maternity services. Part of that is to provide infection control standards to ensure our mothers, babies and colleagues uh, are safe. Please visit hse.ie to learn how, more how you can protect yourself. Thank you. COVID-19 or coronavirus is here, so it's important to have the correct information at hand, like knowing the symptoms, a high temperature, a cough, shortness of breath or breathing difficulties. If you have symptoms, self-isolate to protect others and phone your GP. Visit hse.ie for updated factual information and advice or give us a call. Protection from coronavirus, it's in our hands. My name is Naro. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist and associate clinical director at University Maternity Hospital Limerick. We always ensure that infection prevention and control protocols are implemented across our hospital. This is absolutely necessary for us to keep our mothers and babies safe and also our staff. Please visit hse.ie to see what you can do to protect yourself and your loved ones. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dipna. I'm a midwife at University Maternity Hospital Limerick. I'm going to show you around our hospital. There is a multidisciplinary team of highly skilled professionals, including students at University Maternity Hospital Limerick, who will care for you throughout your stay. When the time comes for you to be admitted to hospital, you take the front door entrance to reception. Always clean your hands on the way in. You will go to the receptionist and she will direct you to the Maternity Emergency Unit. In the Maternity Emergency Unit, you will be met by a midwife who will ask you what has brought you to the hospital today. She will take your temperature, pulse, blood pressure, take your history, listen to your baby's heartbeat and may perform a tracing of the baby's heartbeat if necessary. This could take up to one hour and you will be informed what will happen next. The Danube Suite 
is one of the birthing rooms where you can give birth to your baby. You will be cared for by a midwife and a doctor can be called if needed. Here we provide a relaxing environment with a birthing pool, walk-in shower and birthing balls to help you remain upright, change position and support you in labour. The midwife will discuss your birth preferences with you and types of pain relief available, gas and air, petrine injection or epidural. You can remain active during labour, adapt an upright position and use the birthing balls in any of our birthing rooms. Once you've had your baby, you will be given an opportunity to carry out skin-to-skin -skin contact and feed your baby. The theatre is beside the birthing room and is where a cesarean birth is carried out. After you've had your baby, you will be transferred to the postnatal ward. The baby is beside you all the time, which helps you respond to your baby's needs and feeding cues. You will stay on this ward until discharge. You may have the opportunity, depending on where you live, to avail of community midwifery services if available which includes early transfer home if both baby and you are well. If your baby needs extra observation and additional care, your baby may be taken to the neonatal unit. Here, baby will be cared for by specialists. Thank you for watching our journey through University Maternity Hospital Limerick. It is our pleasure to support you through this process of becoming a new parent.
Nature has been researching your milk for hundreds of millions of years. The composition of your milk is alive and changes throughout the day, the night, the months and the years to meet your child's needs. Your milk contains stem cells. These are cells that create and repair the body and are being researched worldwide to cure conditions like Alzheimer's and diabetes. Your milk contains components that kill cancerous cells. Your body identifies bacteria and viruses found in your baby's body and environment. You then produce antibodies specifically tailored to those infections and deliver them to your child through your milk. Your milk appears to switch on a gene in your baby's body which produces a hormone called leptin. This hormone tells your baby when his tummy is full, protecting him against overeating. Your milk contains oxytocin, a hormone that induces relaxation and feelings of well-being in your child and in you. It's all in you. Human milk, tailor-made for tiny humans. Changing your newborn's nappy is one of those things you'll be doing seven or eight times a day, so it's best to be organised from the start. Make sure you have everything you need ready and close to hand. Place your baby on a clean, soft, flat surface. Open the nappy and wipe away excess stools from the general area with the corner of the nappy. Hold your baby by the ankles and lift up their bottom. Use soft cotton balls or a wet cloth to clean your baby. Clean around the umbilical cord area. For a girl, be sure to wipe from front to back. This will help minimise the spread of an infection. Swap a clean nappy for the dirty one. Use the tabs to see which way goes up. Avoid covering the umbilical cord as this can cause irritation. For a boy, keep his penis pointed down. Fasten the nappy at both sides with the tape, making sure it's snug, but not so tight that it pinches the skin. Retake the soiled nappy around the contents, put it in a plastic bag and discard it in the bin. Dress your baby and wash your hands thoroughly. Babies wet their nappies several times a day. The number of wet nappies is a helpful sign of how much fluid the baby is taking in. Generally a baby should have five to six wet nappies each day. This is a good indication that they're getting enough milk.
you put your cold water in first, you add your hot, you just check it with your elbow. If it's comfortable for your elbow, it's fine for the baby. It's about 36 degrees centigrade, the water temperature. You put your hand underneath the baby's head like that. You just took the baby under your elbow resting on your hip. Now, I'm holding the baby in the same position and I'm going to wash the baby's hair. So just wash it nice and gently. This is a very good baby. And I'm going to come back onto my mat and I'm going to lie the baby back down and I'm going to dry the baby's head well. Babies lose a lot of heat from their heads, so make sure that you dry the baby's head very well. Now, when you're lifting the baby into the bath, just turn the baby over on its side, like, over in this position. Just put one arm, your left arm, underneath the head and hold on to the left arm. And put your right arm underneath the bottom and hold on to the left leg. Now, you see, there is no way this baby's going to fall on me. I've got the head well supported with my arm here on the left, and I've got a good grip of the baby. And nice and gently, you're going to let the baby into the bath. If the baby's enjoying it, of course, just leave them in for a little while. Babies are very used to water from being inside, so they love the sound of the water. I'm going to lift the baby out again. Now, you see, I'm lifting the baby out nice and gently. So you settle them down, give them a little cuddle, settle them down, and then you're going to dry the baby off well. Don't forget areas where they can get sore if you leave them wet. All babies are quite fat in here, so get right in there under the chin, because if you leave areas wet, they're going to get red and sore. They are all get right under the armpit here, where they're all they're like that. And another area is get right under the behind the knees and in the groin area. There are areas that can actually get sore if you leave them wet. So you make sure that you dry those areas off very well.